guys, how you going? We'll just call this part two of the preparations for Cape York. Um, I won't bore you with the details, just going to do the oil change on the Prado. Uh, like I said before, I like to do every 5,000 k's for this diesel. Uh, it looks after the engine a bit better. Um, it's a 180,000 k service, so I'm going to do a few more things to it. Uh, replace fuel filters, uh, air uh, cleaners, um, I've done the cabin filter. So, um, yeah, I won't bore you with the details, but um, very shortly I'm going down to Dan's automotive and I'll show you how we run through the car, uh, just checking for things for a long trip. So uh, when we go, we'll be going uh, basically Brisbane to um, Rocky to Cairns and up to Cape York. So, uh, and then we're gonna be obviously up in the Cape uh, doing the telegraph track. So it's important to keep your vehicle, or know your vehicle and have it checked ready for um, a trip like that. So I'm just going to go through some basic stuff. Maybe you're planning a trip uh, to the Cape or elsewhere. And um, I'm going to show you just what, as a not as a mechanic person, can just have a look for. And then also what, uh, you know, we can leave to the experts to check out as well. And there's just one other thing I forgot to mention. Um, I've also bought one of these, which is the cabin filter. This is the, uh, in inside the cabin is a filter just ours is just uh behind the glove box it's for the uh, air conditioning so uh, i had a look at ours before i bought this and it's in not too uh, great condition so i bought one of these to uh, also replace that <laughs> You know when you've had one of those days, it might be time to go inside and put your feet up. <laughs> well, I've just knocked my head down there and I've dropped the cap, the oil cap. <laughs> down under here, which I'm trying to get out without taking all the guards off the bottom. So I don't know if you can see it up there, but it's right up there. And I'm trying to get it out, so I'm just about there. I just thought I'd show you before I pulled it out. Okay, I'm just gonna try and grab it and pull him through but I think I don't know there might not be enough room oh here we go oh <laughs> look at that eh so I was trying to screw it on fell off <laughs> and dropped all the way down there at least I got it back ah uh, the joys eh the joys of doing your own car guys this is a bit of a my workshop here so I'm just uh Changing over the fuel filter, first time I've ever done this. So I'm new to it. In, on here that, um, I mean, it's pretty straightforward, really. And then once it's on, I give this one a pump, pump all the fuel back in. And uh, on the Prados, as you probably already know, um, if you do this kind of stuff yourself, is that there's another filter about halfway, a bit, bit more than halfway back uh, underneath the car. So uh, I'll be doing that one as well. So I won't bore you with the deep. So guys, I got it back in place. I've just got to um, obviously uh, connect the fuel lines back up uh, there. So they're just sitting over here uh, like so. And um, put the two, tighten these two nuts up here. I've put the, the two um, connectors on and this is where we pump it up to uh, get all the air out. So yeah, we'll see how we go. Hey guys, how you going? Welcome once again to Prado 150 out of here. Really appreciate your company. You guys are looking awesome over there. So um, today, uh, there's nothing too spectacular today. However though, I don't know if, uh, if anyone's got a big trip uh, planned coming up. Uh, we've got a fairly big one coming up. Uh, we're going to the Cape in June. So we've just been doing a lot of preparations uh, for that. Just in relation to the car, and the small camper trailer that we're going to be taking. So I'm going to run you through that. Uh, might help anyone that's uh, got a big trip planned. Just what to do, what things to look out for, you know, how old your car is, how many k's it's done. Um, and, you know, judging on that information to, you know, what you should be uh, looking out for. Possibly um, any spares that you should take, any spare parts, tools, all that kind of thing. Uh, people that I've spoken to that have done the Cape, they always say we took too much. Some of the stuff we took we didn't really need to take. Um, so I'm taking 
my boys uh, taking myself, uh, Joshua Lachlan and Chloe. Um, Shelly's not able to go because of her kidney uh, dialysis that she has to do, so that makes it uh, pretty possible to uh, do that, particularly um, being up in the remote parts of Queensland. So I'm going to take you through that, uh, take you through where I take the car to get it looked at, uh, some of the stuff I do myself, and the reason for that is I've, I've got the time to do that, and also it gives me a chance to, to learn a bit more about my vehicle and the different parts of it and get used to, uh, you know, preventive maintenance, knowing when something's gonna go wrong before it actually goes wrong. So, I'll take you through all that today. Hey guys, well I've got uh, Dan here from Dan's Automotive. Hey there, um, he's going to be having a, a doing a bit of a check on the car. So um, Dan, tell us a bit about yourself, mate. Um, I see you got a new workshop here. Yeah, yeah, we've only been here a couple of months now and not fully set up yet. Um, yeah. But there's been a lot happening. Yeah, um, we've been. It used to be mobile. Yeah, it used to yeah. be mobile stuff. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, it just got busier and busier. Yeah. And um, coming here and. Uh, We've ramped up even more, yeah, hence yeah. why the workshop's so so full. But yeah. um, but anyway, uh, it's, it's been a great yeah. thing for us. Real good. And now you're qualified in um, automotive, uh, auto so electric, auto electrical, and, air, air conditioning, conditioning, and mechanical. So, yeah, so we do all three. You're here. pretty much the one the one stop shop here. Yeah, well, you kind of have to be these days. I mean, it's very very hard with a lot of modern vehicles. You find you've got to kind of get into some of the electrical components mm. by removing certain bits and pieces and you're almost a mechanic anyway you yeah, know? yeah yeah um, yeah and uh, and vice versa a lot of the mechanical stuff requires um a lot of in-depth kind of electronics and yeah, computer yeah. diagnostics so on and so forth so um, i i just i like doing a mix of everything as yeah. well so yeah. now i'm here because works. you're you're the primary man well I, uh, <laughs> you know I'm, a lot about it. I know that I, I'm the I'm the Toyota guy. I, yeah, I, I love yeah. my Toyotas. I do love my European stuff as well, but Toyotas is is, is yep. the go-to for yep, me. Yep. Yeah, I've owned many. I'm probably going to get another one. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so, nice. Yeah, yeah. Um, so um, as you know, I'm here because I've got a Cape York trip planned. Yes. Um, yep. Now that's not until June, so mm -hmm. about a month and a bit away. So am, am I at a good a good time to come and get my car checked over? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, best times a couple of weeks before you're heading off. Yeah. Um, Doing it a few months before things can happen in between, yeah. um, but a couple of weeks before you head off is, is great, and that yeah. gives you a good amount of time to fix anything up if anything needs doing. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, at the moment parts are a little bit scarce for some bits yeah. and pieces, and <laughs> <laughs> it's best to be prepared. It gets yeah. plenty of time to get them in. Yeah. yeah. Now, um, yeah. in our okay. conversation we had before, you mentioned preventive maintenance. So, mm. um, what, do you, um, what, what do you say about that? For me, what do you mean by that? It's number one. Preventative yeah. maintenance basically is actually visually checking everything and getting a good idea of what stage your vehicle is at. And if yeah. something looks like it's not gonna last the trip, yeah. it's not gonna last. For me, if I think something's not gonna last six months, it goes in the bin, yeah. I replace it, I yeah. fix it. Yeah. Um, the last thing you want, like I was just saying to you, five minutes here fixing something could save you five or 10 hours out, out there in the bush. bush yeah. Particularly like a place you know, like Cape York. Yeah, you've got no one around that's really going to go, oh yeah, mate, I've got, I've got that sensor. Yeah, 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 yeah. Here, we've got it all. Let's make sure it's 110% before it leaves. Yeah. Not driving halfway there and going, oh, I probably should have checked that. Or yeah. I remember that guy mentioned sure something about that. that part and of... that's bloody, it's Murphy's Law. Yeah, yeah. It's going to happen. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. So um, what do you reckon? We'll get this car in. Yeah, so And um, we'll start yeah. having a bit of a look at it. Um, 
brakes as well, make sure the brakes actually are going to last the trip. It's all well and good brakes, having enough meat on there to get you around town, but considering you're going to be doing a few thousand Ks and a hard few thousand Ks, you want the brakes. Slight grooving and scores in there, but generally speaking, as long as there's no massive lips on the edge of the rotors and, you know, they, they're not in terrible condition, they're not warped, you know, a brake shutter, like this is quite common to happen you know, a few thousand kilometers after having a fresh set of brakes and there you get little scores and things. And yeah, yeah. Nature of the beast, take a vehicle off road, something gets jammed in there, puts a little score mark in it. It's not the end of the world. Yeah, I guess this suspension you haven't had in here all that long, so we're expecting it to be, um, we're expecting it to be good. Strut tops as well are a common thing on these, but they look like they've possibly been replaced when the suspension was done. Usually when I do them as well, I throw a set of strut tops in because they can flog out in the middle and you get a lot of movement in the actual shaft there and yep but um yeah when we get the wheels back on we're going to check the ball joints because it is fairly common for the upper, upper and lower joints when these two get play in them and uh you know it kind of has a knock-on effect for other components uh, same with rack ends as well looks like you've actually got some heavy duty ones in here um yeah they've been replaced they've been done yeah, yeah. Very common on a lot of IFS stuff. I mean, uh, yeah, you put bigger tyres on them, a bit of lift, and they soon the rack ends flog out a bit. You know, a bit of vigorous off-roading, but um, yeah, these ones are the road-safe four-wheel drive ones, which are pretty Big damn quality, strong. Yeah, yeah. yeah, very strong. I've rarely seen these CVs fail. Okay. Yep. Um, I mean, a lot of people don't actually use the Prados much off-road, but those who do, I've rarely seen them actually fail. You get the odd split boot here and there. Yep. Um, but as far as them actually braking, I'm very happy. We're saying about preventative maintenance, yeah. being prepared is also, you know, paramount. Yep. Um, the good thing with these is the CVs are the same each side. Yeah, okay. So yep. carrying just one spare CV is going to get you, and yep. it, it, look, it, if you broke both, then good on you. Yeah. You, 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 were, you were wheeling hard. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I would carry one. Okay. I, yep. Um, but yeah, these CVs are, they're quite long. Um, and the good thing is you can see we've got the suspension at full, uh, full drop there and uh, the CV is nowhere near um, bottomed out or, Flex, or, yeah. or locking up, you know. But um, no, nothing, nothing to worry about here. Brake lines look good. It's another thing as well. Any perishing um, or splits in brake lines, replace them because although they have an inner, uh, you know, an, an inner structural kind of layer there, and the, the outside is just purely rubber. If it's splitting on the outside, it's old, it's perished, mm. it's worn. Um, it's going to start to wear the in, inner layer as well. And the last thing you want is a, a brake hose to to let go. Yeah. Doing 100k an hour with a camper trailer on the back. Yeah. I mean, yeah. this your vehicle's fairly new. Um, the older stuff, yeah. Just yeah. thorough thorough checking of the braking system is very important. Yeah. yeah control arm bushes. Um, as far as control arm bushes go, like you can see in here, we're we're pretty we're pretty good. We've got no no splits or tears. Um, just a bit of mud. Just a, just a bit of mud. <laughs> yeah, but uh, we can see clearly inside of there that they're they're good, and, and we will just get a, a pry bar on there and just give them a bit of a wiggle backwards and forwards, and yep. just to make sure there's no play. But uh, again, your vehicle's not really old enough to kind of have that issue at this point. Yep. yep. And brake pads, they all look well. They look brand new. I think you said you did it yeah, yeah, yeah. recently, yeah. Yeah, but um, no, suspension looks good, other than the mud. This is another common thing as well to go on uh, on a lot of IFS stuff, is this uh, this bottom strut eye here. It takes a lot of load. All the load from this lower control arm is exerted through the, the strut here, and it all goes onto that bush. Yeah, really, um, yeah. They can flog out and uh, and and wear and crack, and you'd you'd end up with the actual the eye of the strut sitting purely on the on the bolt. Yep. No no bushing there at all, and um, yeah, causes uh, causes a lot of damage. Yep. Not yep. to mention uh, play in your suspension. But I've, you, I'm sure a lot of people have seen online as well. They've heard stories of these uh, these pins here on the actual strut twisting or snapping off on the stock suspension or, or cheaper quality stuff. This, uh, this formula suspension, obviously, that's uh, a massive upgrade from the stock um, section there that's in here. It's, it's almost double in size. Um, and I dare say made out of very strong material. Yeah. 
um, and welded all the way around as well. <laughs> the, uh, you see a lot of the cheaper ones where they're just kind of welded on, on each side, but oh, these are right, yeah. welded right, right the way around and um, yeah, very thick in comparison. So yeah, next thing is um, we'll rotate the wheels as you wanted and um, check the uh, set the poles you want some bush. So Dan, what's, um, what's this check you're doing here, mate? Uh, so this basically, we want to check for any play in the upper and lower ball joints. Yep. Um, it's something that, when I say it's not as easy to check as other things, it can be um, unmistaken, um, or ball joint play can be um, mistaken for other things sometimes. Um, but to actually check the ball joints themselves, you've got to, correctly, you've got to have the, the lower control arm supported by the jack, a pry bar and a long pry bar for plenty of leverage underneath the tyre there and a bit of a lift like this. And basically what this does is it um, shows up if there is any play in the ball joints themselves. It takes, it, it eliminates play in any other component basically, so. So you're listening for um, any, any what, noises? Any noises, like yeah. any little clunking or thuds, and yep. also. The feel of it. The feel of it. Yep, yep. And visually seeing play as well. Yep. Um, so you simply just get your hand at the top here, feel the top ball joint. That feels solid as a rock. I've got no play there whatsoever. And you helped me earlier on just to check, check the bottom one and no, we couldn't, couldn't find anything. No, Mate, no now is that is that because it's a Prado? <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 it does help having the tire match. <laughs> but um, I, I think, it, again, just, just the age of the vehicle. Um, yep. The tires aren't the issues. It, it's mainly people who have really big lift in here and the geometry isn't quite set up correctly you know the steering's out slightly the top control arm's got a massive angle on it and usually they've gone oversize on tires because yeah. of, you know yep. and um yeah once once they're all set up and they've got heavier duty ball joints in there and the the camber and alignment set correctly you don't really see many of yep. that but yours is perfectly fine and, and the way yours is set up i'd expect these ball joints to last so quite a considerable amount of yep. time yep um so another thing to check for as well is playing the steering. And we already worked out that you've got some heavy duty rack ends in there, but um, playing the steering, just uh, a bit of side to side movement yep. and nothing there. That's very, very solid. Yep. And also wheel bearings, just top and bottom as well. So these are a maintenance free bearing as such. They're a fully sealed unit that are press in, press out type. Um, there's no adjustments that can actually be made on them. Yep. Um, they're either good or bad. Yeah, okay. Um, and obviously bad is uh, replacement. Bad, yeah. bad is replacement, yeah. But this this here um, is perfect. There's no there's no play in here whatsoever. Yep, we're, excellent. Yep. We're good. So Dan, what are you up to now, mate? Yeah. Um, just the same as the front. Just check out all the brakes and suspension on here. And yep. um, we've got some adjustable rear links in there, which is good. Just allows a little bit more travel and um, yeah, the stock ones kind of bottom out after a while and they get a bit unhappy so these have got a nice little um, so we, um, so, joint on there. So my son and I we we actually we put that one in. Yeah. Um so have we done all right or we yeah they look, they're look great. okay we no, adjusted it correctly. I mean this this is now at ride height the yep. vehicle sitting on the stands and you've got the the sway bar pretty much as parallel as possible with the with the yep. lower trailing arm there and that's think, that's the best way to kind of have them set up. There's a bit of a mark there, so would it's, that be where it's, it's dropping just, down? Yeah, it, it has it has just touched. And um, is that a worry or not a worry? As that's so long as it's not burying itself in there. I mean, under full flex, things do happen to touch here and there. But um, yep, you could shorten them up by five mil. But uh, honestly, I mean, have you had this thing at pretty pretty full? Sometimes, flex? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's only just touching. Wheels lifting off the ground, that kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm not too concerned about that. I mean, it's not like it's rubbing every single time you drive it, is it? We've got a, we've got a good bit of gap. I there. think under, yeah, I think yeah. under. Yep. Um, but uh, yeah, everything else is looking looking good, other than the other than the mud. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> these uh, these shocks are all very new, just like the front and um, yep. brakes. You said they've only just been done. They look yeah. brand spanking new. Um, slight scoring on the rotors, but it's yeah. Yep. Typical of a okay. four-wheel drive. Um, so basically, what we're doing now is your handbrake's pretty loose up at the up at the lever. So there's two adjustments on, or three adjustments as such. There's one in in uh, in each drum section of these rotors, and um, there's one up on the actual lever itself. Now these ones here aren't the easiest to kind of get to. You've kind of got half a, a hole there to act, actually access the uh, the adjuster inside. But um, what is what are you sticking there, Dan? 
just a little flat blade and yep. you can move her up and down. <laughs> now, um, just uh, just prior to um, doing this, we were yeah. we just rotated the tyres. Is that right? Yeah, we Dan, just did a so, quick rotation. So, so Dan's just gone through and had a bit of a measure up on the. Yeah, these so, tyres aren't that old. No, so we rotated the spare into the left-hand front, which is the quickest wearing tyre. Usually, yep. you find it's always the left-hand front that wears quicker than others. So the spare's gone there because it's never been put on the road. Mm. Um, and then we've cross rotated, so um, basically right hand front has now gone to left hand rear and, yep. and vice versa. Yep, yep. Um, just to keep the wear on the tyres as even as possible because these are a good high quality set of wheels. I was going to say, you, you said we did a good job in yeah. picking these tyres. Brilliant, brilliant yep. tyres. Tyre done a real good job with these RTs. Yep. Um, the perfect combination between all terrain and mud. Yeah. Uh, with basically light truck tyre strength. Yeah. What more yep. could you ask for? Yeah. Really? So Dan, I've just seen you jump under the car there, mate. So, uh, what, are, what are you looking for here, mate? We're just going to grease up the uni joints, actually. Yep. Um, another thing that's very, very important um, is to make sure you've got plenty of grease in the unis because if you don't have grease in the unis, uh, water and mud's going to certainly find its place, and uh, that will wear them very prematurely. So, which ultimately will create a fail. Yeah, well, you'll get play in there, and once you get play, that's it. You're uh, you're gonna you're gonna have them fail soon thereafter, and you can feel there's there's no lateral or vertical movement in in okay. those. Uh, so, again, I, I would expect this to be quite a good tire to do. Okay. Very, very yep. good uni joints in these from factory, and they seem to last quite a long time. Yeah. The rest of the vehicle at the back here, the trailing arms, upper trailing arms, and. The rear of the fuel tank as well. Just check the the actual fuel filler pipes. Make sure they're good. You don't really want to be losing valuable fuel. You better check that filter that I uh, put in, hey. <laughs> right, Make sure so the home mechanics did all right. It uh, it looks good to me. Um, I'll just have a bit of a check of these lines that are on here. It's, it's been very important to get this filter around the right way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Have I succeeded? Yes, I good, have seen. Good, good. I have seen someone, and I don't know how they managed to do it, but they put it on the other way, and oh, uh, they didn't okay. get uh, didn't get the correct bypass sure. between um, uh, between each tank, and ended up running the main tank dry, and um, didn't realise because they go, oh, it's still fuel in the tank, and it was still registering fuel that was in the other one, but it wasn't actually bypassing through into the main uh, as it right. should. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, you've done that one correctly. That's, that's good. And, and, and I've got a few good points for that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah it, it is a good a good idea to actually replace this one kind of when you do your main filter. I, yeah. I, I like to do my main filters a lot more regularly than they specify. You know, yeah. I, I do mine every kind of 20,000. Yeah. It yeah. does seem overboard, but uh, um, water and sediment in the fuel is pretty detrimental to a yeah. diesel. Yeah. And um, yeah. the last thing you want is it to. Uh, cause problems to injectors and things. So I do that every 20 and then every other fuel filter I, I actually do my yeah, bypass. Yep, yeah. yeah. Yep. It's cheap insurance. Good good clean fuel is yeah. very, very important, especially yeah. if you want to really look after your four-wheel drive. It, it, it is important to do. Um, but uh, anyway, we'll grab the green. I usually just go up to the, the seam on these. Oh, uh, yep. So, can just see the coolant above that seam just there because um, <clears throat> it's best to be slightly over full then now I will say Dan Dan's worked a miracle here because uh, you know I'll blame myself because when we were uh, putting all this stuff in and uh, also adding the snorkel uh, between me and Joshua we snapped one of these little things off so it wasn't sealing so uh, Dan's performed a bit of a miracle here and we've managed to, you probably can't see it too well there, but... Yeah, just down the, down the bottom there. Oh, yep. Yeah. Yeah. We've managed to uh, secure that clip in the place, so thanks for that, Dan. It's and, only, uh, uh, now only we have a bush seal. fix, but it's so that's all right. that's what we save need. you an airbox. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, obviously we had to replace the airbox, not to mention the expense, but uh, we've sealed all the snorkel in there, so that would have to be um, obviously uh, redone. So thanks for that, mate. Good job there. No problem. So what's, uh, we're coming towards the end of our uh, 
check over of the vehicle. So, so far, have you found any major issues? No, no? nothing, nothing at all. As I expect the product to be in, yep. in good condition. Um, so to, to get it to be with no issues, a lot of that is um, keeping up maintenance, yeah, keeping up servicing. I mean, it's like anything. I mean, at the end, of, yes, they are a good vehicle. At the end of the day, um, they're not going to last forever if mm. they're neglected. You know, mm. you, you've got to keep your maintenance mm. up. I mean, any, anything turbo diesel, like they're a, they're a warm, you know, they, they, they run warm. They're yep. a, they're a hard working engine. Um, you've got to got to keep the maintenance up. Um, same with all your all your drive line curves as well. You're driving through water and mud and stuff. You know, you've, yeah, you, yeah. You, you've got to keep an eye on them, change them regularly. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I know we're talking about Prados because this, oh, this is a you know Prado 150 out of here mm. um, YouTube channel, but um, it also goes for any any car or any four drive really, any doesn't it? Drive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, some people use them a lot more off road than yeah. others, uh, yeah. but at, at the end of the day, you still got to keep the maintenance up to them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and like we said before, fuel filters. Drain them every service, get any sediment or water out of there, and, um, yep. and replace them. I say, I personally, with all my customers' vehicles, I, I replace them every twenty thousand. Yeah, it's cheap insurance. Yeah, you know, especially yeah. the guys who do do a lot of travelling, it's cheap insurance to replace these every twenty thousand. Yep. Um, and they're they're not expensive. And it's like oil. Um, even even though the book says ten, me personally, I do mine every five. Yeah, same. All our vehicles, you know? I get done every five. Yeah. Uh, petrol slightly different. You know, you can you can st stretch them out to 10, 15 on on some petrol um, vehicles, but basically everything that comes through the workshop here is going to get serviced at least every 10. Yeah, yep, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oil and filter changes again. They're cheap. I had a I had a customer in here uh, about a couple of weeks ago who hadn't serviced their vehicle for seventy thousand kilometres. It nearly cost them an engine. Oh um, wow! Yeah, there I you go. The, pulled the rocket cover off, and I couldn't even see the camshafts. It was just yep. full of sludge. Yeah. So it took me about uh, seven hours to strip all the timing covers and everything off, and just clean all the sludge mm, out. And uh, mm, they mm. they've been going now for a couple of weeks, no problems. Yeah. But it had very low oil pressure and nearly cost them an engine. Yep. Um, yep. You don't want that to happen. No, engines is expensive. Definitely not. No, that's right. Yeah. Um, but so what's um what are you what are you looking at now, Dan? No, just basically just just checking all the fluid levels, topping yep. topping up. You, you've done the power steer fluids, and and that that looks like it's well and truly up to up to the full mark on there. Um, we've just topped up the coolant yep. with a little bit of water. You don't have to always use concentrate yep. or anything. You can just top them up with a bit of bit of water. Yep. Um, brake fluid. We've seen and how's all the um, how's all the hoses going? Is that something that you check? Yeah, Dan, absolutely. Before you, you go got to check all your hoses, yeah. and in your case as well, going on the a kind of trip that you are, um, yep. it pays just to take an upper and lower radiator hose. Oh, okay, right? yep. Just yep. A, just a spare one. Yep. And take a couple of a meters belt. of heater hose as well. Okay. Like just yep. you know this this you, you can buy it in, in in rolls. Just like a couple of meters because if you do end up springing a leak in one of these, you can quickly throw a piece of hose on there that's yep. going to get you out of trouble like you're not going to go and buy every single individual molded hose you know yep. you can just throw a a, a, a section in there and yep. you'll be get fine. You out of and trouble. A, a box of hose clamps and things like that gets you yeah, out of trouble yeah. Yeah. Okay. and yeah a, a spare belt um yep. they're a multi-accessory belt they run air conditioning water pump um, alternator. Yeah. You lose the belt, you lose all well, three. Yeah. They're not yeah. like the old stuff where you have multiple belts for different accessories. This one's all in one. And although they're a nice big chunky belt, things can happen. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So it always pays to keep a spare. Your one's in perfect condition, but it always helps to have a spare. Just there. in case. Oh look. At, at the end of the day, uh, a worm drive clamp is better. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's these, only better for the. Yeah. The, the, the these are ease of installation they're kind of preset to a you know once you put them on they've got a preset tension they, uh, taking them on and off all the time they they lose tension they, they're gonna leak yeah you my rule of thumb usually with these is if, if I've removed them on something that's actually got pressure in it yep I'll put a worm drive clamp back on yeah this has got no pressure in here it's a, it's a low pressure part of the, of the fuel system yeah and to be quite honest um, these hoses are a pretty tight fit on here anyway. Yeah, and yeah. Your, your clamps, these little small clamps, have got enough tension. If you do notice that they, you know, they still move around a bit, then you put a so weight drive on there. Mate, uh, <laughs> bit of a um, bit of a storm going on yeah. in the background, eh? Yeah, we're lucky, just lucky a bit you're of a in the workshop, mate. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, Dan, we just we've obviously just done the the full check over. Yep. Um, I've done a bit of work uh, yesterday on it, uh, as far as the servicing part of it goes. Mm. Um, 
And then you've you put the mechanical goggles on. Uh, just, just yeah, go just over over full, yeah. full visual on there, and um, just checks a couple of things that sometimes get overlooked or, or not checked in your, your, you know, your kind of regular services. So it certainly, um, it certainly made me feel confident now. Yeah. Um, I mean, you said you said a minute ago that you'd be happy to go around. I'd, the I'd jump in this right now. I'd, I'd jump in this right now and drive to yep. WA. No yep. worries. Yep. Yep. No, no so problem. basically, drive out of here and and hit the road, yeah. hit the tracks. Yep. Yeah. Yep, no so that uh, gives me peace of mind, mm. it, and that's part of it too, isn't it? Getting, getting uh, having that peace of mind yeah. that your vehicle's uh, not going to fail, and um, you know, you, I now feel confident that all the checks have been done. The, it makes makes for such a more you know a much more enjoyable holiday when you go. Yeah. The vehicle's good. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have to worry in the back of my mind about something not being quite right or yeah. not being checked. You, we know it's good. Yeah. We, we, we know that it's definitely got the capabilities to get up there and back and yeah, yeah. and um, yeah so just a, a run a quick brief overall run through so we've done the hoses they're all good we've checked all the hoses um, yep. you've used a bit of a mirror thing that you use yeah, to check so the water pump. we always check the water pumps yeah. just make sure I mean sometimes they can slowly dribble and weep underneath and it won't present any leaks you know underneath the vehicle Underground. yeah um, but we've checked that in your water pumps perfectly fine yeah um, and uh, yeah, just all the hoses, we've given them a bit of a, a, a visual check and you know, felt the consistency of the rubber and they, they all, they, they're all perfectly yep. fine. But like I said, take a top and bottom radiator hose okay. with you. So top and bottom radiator hose, yeah. uh, and then also a, a fan belt, a, or a belt. A drive belt, belt yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and a couple of metres of just your, a, a roll of your, of your heater hose yep. and, and some clamps. And yep. so if, any, if anything does happen to fail, you can cut off a section and, and make it work. Yep. Yep. Yeah, you did mention also before maybe take a um, one CV joint just one CV joint to get yeah. out of jail I mean, free card. Some people thing. will say, "Oh, what's the point of that?" But the fact of the matter is, if you did happen to have one fail, and I, I don't know about you, but I, I don't want to be up there changing out CV no. boots and things. I'd rather just pull a shaft <laughs> out, put it in, and, 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 away, yeah. and away we go. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and the good thing is they are interchangeable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Both sides the same. Yeah, don't buy left and right one. Yeah, yeah. 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 Fair enough. Uh, excellent, thanks mate. I've That's certainly right. learned a lot just, just by um, well, helping you mate. I don't know if I've been a help or a hindrance, no, no, but, um, <laughs> no, but it's certainly been uh, good also to know what you know what I can check myself. Uh, yeah. Just with um, you know, my non-mechanical uh, eyes. And uh, yeah, it's been great. So thanks mate. And I'll leave a link um, to the video uh, with your details in there. And uh, Dan faced in Toowoomba. I don't know if you can hear me, the, yeah. the rain's really bucking down.